Hello, welcome to this video presentation on therapeutic use of the language interpreter. Basics on working with interpreters for counseling and psychotherapy. I'm Dr. Ben Kuo, professor of clinical psychology at the University of Windsor in Ontario, Canada. This video presentation is brought to you by a team of my students, including Stephanie Nadon, Brendan Gloss, Marianne Mahdi, Nada Hussein, and myself. There are two primary purposes for this particular training video. First, we wish to highlight a few basic issues with providing therapy to non-English speaking clients through a language interpreter. And second, we wish to provide visual demonstration to help illustrate helpful versus unhelpful behaviors of therapists when working with interpreters in delivering therapy. It is important, however, to note that what we highlight in this video represents only a snapshot of important considerations and relevant skills pertaining to therapeutic use of interpreter. We hope this video will spur your interest to do more readings and learning about refining your skills in working with interpreters in therapy. At the end of this video, we will provide you with a few reference articles for your information. In the ensuing segments of video, you'll see a series of demonstrations of role play therapy interactions within an online teletherapy format between an English speaking therapist, played by Stephanie first, and then followed by Brendan second, and an Arabic speaking client, Amina, played by Nada. This therapy is conducted with interpretation of a bilingual English Arabic speaking language interpreter, Sarah, played by Marion. Prior to the first therapy session with your client, it would be helpful if possible, to have a brief pre-session meeting with the language interpreter. It is to help familiarize the interpreters with the process and expectations associated with counseling and psychotherapy, such as confidentiality policy, ethical considerations, and therapist plans and approaches. During the initial therapy session, therapists should respect the alliance between the client and the interpreter who share a common language and trying to communicate greeting in the client's native language if all possible. Notice in the following interaction, we see that the therapist, Stephanie, enter into the session by checking in and greeting both the client, Amina, and the interpreter, Sarah, with Mahrabam, a hello, in Arabic as a greeting. أهلاً يا سعودة ازيك؟ أنا منيح الحمد لله أنت كيفك؟ أنا تمام الحمد لله مبسوطة إني شفتك النهاردة. Hello, مرحبا. I see you're both catching up. Yes, we're just catching up briefly and saying hello to each other. Oh, that's great. Do you want some time to check in more before we get started? Oh, that's okay. We're all done. أهلاً يا سعودة ازيك؟ أنا منيحة الحمد لله أنت كيفك؟ أنا الحمد لله تمام أه مبسوطة أوي إن أنا شفتك Hello again What's going on? Oh we were just catching up briefly and saying hello to each other Oh okay Well we should probably get started Oh okay لازم نبدأ هلا During in-person therapy therapists should position themselves and direct their communication attention squarely towards the client rather than the interpreter. There's a tendency for us to speak to the person who understands our language within an interpretation situation, it will be the um, interpreter. So resist that tendency. Instead, of, by directing attention towards the client, by using appropriate body positioning, as well as appropriate eye contact uh, with the client. As well, therapist should speak to the client directly in first person through interpretation. In this next segment, notice the mistake 
uh, the therapist made in addressing the client in third person through the interpreter. So, how are things going for her this week? Uh, he and his keep can make a support. Baali has, uh, Baali fatra has to be with day or day man lwahdi. Things have been tough lately. I've, I've been really down and feel like I'm constantly on the edge. Mm. That sounds like such a weight to bear alone. Can you ask how she's feeling right now? It, it sounds like she's feeling very anxious. To communicate effectively between languages, it is important to remember that the client may or may not be psychologically minded or familiar with many mental health concepts or terminologies we use in the West. Or that mental health, emotional and psychological concepts and expressions can be easily interpreted in another language in the case of our demonstration, Arabic. So as a strategy in interpreted counseling sessions, therapists need to keep the counseling dialogue short and succinct and use accessible language. For example, avoiding lengthy expressions, technical terms, jargons, and even colloquialism in English. Notice how the contrast between the first video segment in which the therapist's lengthy dialogue seems to puzzle the client, Amina, while the therapist is unaware. And the second video in which the therapist organized her expression in smaller chunks of information and checks with client for clarity. So panic attacks are really intense periods of anxiety that can happen all of a sudden. And by physical symptoms, I'm referring to any symptoms of anxiety that are present in your body. Like it could be a racing heartbeat or difficulty breathing or even feeling dizzy. And these symptoms can often occur when we have a sudden period of intense anxiety, like a panic attack. No, but the أنا مش متأكدة إن أنا فاهمة قصدك أوي يعني ساعات برتعش وبيكون عندي صعوبة في الكلام هو ده اللي أنت قصدك عليه؟ Oh, sometimes uh, I get those feelings like I start to shake and have difficulty uh, speaking. This is what you mean. So, Amina, how are things going this week? Uh, Amina, كيف كان الأسبوع معك؟ بقالي فترة حاسة إني متضايقة ودايما لوحدي. Things have been tough lately. I've been really down and alone lately. That sounds like so much to cope with alone. As part of a normal conversation, therapists and counselors might unknowingly use colloquial expressions in English, even in the context of interpreted therapy sessions. Colloquialism or cultural original specific common language expressions can pose challenges to the interpreters and the client alike because there might not be equivalent idioms or phrase in the client's language. Similarly, when interpretation is involved, it is important for the therapist to keep the questions and probes short and clear to help ensure that the interpreter is able to convey the therapist's information accurately to the client. These points are illustrated in the following two examples. First, watch out for Brennan's attempt to reflect Amina's experience with anxiety, but use English colloquialism and notice Amina's confusion. However, in the second example, Brandon addresses the same issue, but with first brief statements. Second, checking with Aminas for her understanding of what he just said. So it, it sounds like all of the anxiety was bottled up in your mind, so much so that it almost felt like you're down in the dumps. Maybe, maybe we can talk about how you can recognize when your signs of anxiety are really building. Uh, no, I'm sure. I'm 
مش فاهمة قصدك I'm not sure what you mean mm. Yeah, sorry about that I, I guess by, by bottled up and being in the dumps I, I mean like that having been... so much anxiety and that it increases really quickly Maybe we can talk about how you can recognize when the signs of your anxiety are increasing. Oh, okay. Another critical issue for the therapist to keep in mind is the relationship boundary between the client and the interpreter. It is important to know that clients' family members, such as children's or relatives, what convenient should not be used as language interpreters for counseling and therapy purposes. While this might be very tempting, especially when available language interpreters are scarce or are difficult to access, it is not appropriate. In the following scenario, we see how Brendan responds to Amina's suggestions on having a family member to help interpreting for her for the upcoming session when Sarah, the regular trained interpreter, will be absent. See how Brendan respectfully declines Amina's suggestions but provides her with a brief explanation. Uh, also, Brendan, I won't be able to attend next week uh, due to another commitment. Uh, and Amina, and, um, next الأسبوع اللي جاي أنا مش هقدر أجي طيب لو كده ممكن أسأل عرفتي تيجي هي بتعرف تتكلم إنجليزي أحسن مني uh, She said that she has a cousin who speaks English better than she does and she could help in the session I think we might need to talk about that because I wonder maybe you'd, you'd be uncomfortable having your cousin joining our session Maybe we should reschedule when Sarah is available. Uh, you're right. Uh, I might feel a bit uncomfortable yeah. if my cousin joins us. Uh, so let's just reschedule. Yeah. Okay. A few final points as we wrap up this video presentation. Be reminded that the interpreter is the third person in the therapy room. Interpreters attentively listen and absorb everything that is being said by the therapist and the client. Indirectly, their thoughts and feelings can be profoundly affected by the content of what the client communicated during the session, including pains and traumatic memories. Consequently, therapists should monitor the interpreter's reactions and well-being. For example, after emotionally difficult sessions, such as hearing a client disclosing or discussing their trauma, the therapist should initiate and offer the interpreter the opportunity to debrief after the session if it is necessary. Finally, it is a good practice not to ask interpreters for their views and opinions that fall outside of their expertise areas. Unless the interpreters are trained mental health professionals or are particularly trained in being a cultural broker or cultural liaison, therapists should not assume that the language interpreters has the knowledge or the know-how to offer opinions. Instead, therapists should address their questions or inquiries directly with their client. In closing, we hope you find this video presentation on therapeutic use of language interpreter helpful for your own work, training, and professional development. As mentioned earlier, we include some further readings resources for you should you wish to learn more about the topic. My best wishes to you on behalf of our team from the University of Windsor.